God bless you all. How you guys are doing today? Excellent. We're blessed. We are alive. We are blessed, right? It's a good reason to thank God to be in his house. Uh, as you notice, I'm old-fashioned. I must still have my notebook. I see Pastor Michael using his um, technology. But still, it's a blessing to be here. I want to thank Pastor Michael. I saw some of the pictures on the conference. It was nice. I know that it's always something to learn. And um, a pastor gave me the, um, the opportunity to preach this morning. And it's something very important. He told me uh, about the Holy Spirit. Um, as the sister was reading on the, on, the, on the book of John, it says, the world doesn't know the Spirit because they don't understand what the, the Spirit is doing in the life of the, uh, of the Christian people. And we want to thank God because He gives us the opportunity to know God through His Holy Spirit. And um, I want to read, I'm going to share a few scriptures. I like to read a lot, so um, just... Uh, Follow me, please. Pastor Michael preached from last week, says, Holy Spirit, there is a fruit on the Holy Spirit. And he mentioned some of the fruits on the life of the Christian person. And that's very important because um, the last part of John, the scripture we read this morning, the last part, he says, because he lives with you now and later will be in you. So that's mean he's going to live in your heart, in your person. It's not outside. It's not on the church. It's the Holy Spirit lives in you. And I, I'm just amazed because what the Lord for the people doesn't know me, sisters and brothers, I used to be an alcoholic. And I, don't, I didn't know anything about the church. I, don't know, I didn't know anything about God. And of course, I didn't know anything about the Holy Spirit. The first time I went to the uh, Christian church, I got scared because I see things that I didn't see before. And that's the Holy Spirit working on the, on the, on the people's lives. And what, uh, what the Lord did in my life, he did something very big. Like I said, I used to be an alcoholic. Now there's been 20 years. And I want to thank God because... When the Holy Spirit is start working on the life of the person, it start working on the inside. So he have to take whatever was inside that the Lord has a need to start growing the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And I want to tell you that I'm so grateful with God because he made that change in my life. Sometimes, as a Christian, we want to help the Lord. We want to do the work of the Holy Spirit. We're going to change our husbands. We're going to change our wives. We're going to change our children, right? Well, we have to change our children. You know, we need to kind of teach them. It's different children. But sometimes we want to change grown people. And let me tell you something. We fail to do that many times because we struggle. We're trying to change the personality, the, his habits. And it's hard for us to do that. My wife revealed something to me. When we got married, I was, like I said, I was still being an alcoholic. And she was praying for me, probably she was praying the wrong uh, praying, because she was saying to the Lord, Lord, take this man away from his sins and, and let him stop doing this and, and is praying, praying. You know, he wants me to change. She wants to change me. And after 10 years, she said she got tired. So she says, Lord, I'm going to give you my husband. I'm going to put you in your hands. Do whatever you want to do on him. And when she did that, the Lord started working in my life. The, work start, the Lord started working in my heart. And, and let me tell you, that's when I, I was delivered. The, the song we were uh, singing right now, it says about being free. When somebody is free... You know, I, I, I was grateful with God because he did an amazing change in my life. And since that day, I started serving the Lord. It's a way to be grateful for the, what the Lord is doing in your life. But the word says he's going to start working in your person, inside you. We want to change people and tell them, don't do this, don't do that. Do it this way and do it because that's the way I like it. But we don't know if that's the way the Lord likes it or the Lord 
wants to do in our lives. So that's why, you know, uh, we need to let the Holy Spirit start working on our lives. They start letting grow that fruit in, your li- in our lives. The first, or the first three parts of those fruits is have a relation with God. And Pastor Michael gave us a homework. Hopefully we did our homework. I did mine, Pastor. You know, I, I kind of failed on some of those because I need to work on those. I believe nobody's perfect. We're still struggling with the Christian lives. And we need to ask the Lord for his help every single day. I don't think every Sunday it's enough to come to the house of the Lord and preach the Lord and hear his word. I believe every Christian needs to have a relationship with God, with God every single day, every single moment of your lives. And everything starts in your heart, start in your person. Like the Lord says, and later it will be in you. So this is the work that the Lord is doing on every one of us. And I don't think the, the, the work of the Lord, you know, have a, a limit. Let's say, well, I've reached 50, I've reached 60, I'm done, I learned everything. I believe the Lord or the Holy Spirit is still working until today. No matter how old you are, no matter how experienced you are, we always need to have his guidance. We need to have, you know, to, to, so he can teach you the way we should be. We were uh, uh, reading right now about we need to be more like Jesus. And this is our struggle in this Christian life because Jesus was our uh, bigger example on our lives. And sometimes we don't act like Jesus. We want to do the things our way and my way only. And when we f- find out that sometimes we struggle and we fail doing those things because I, you know, I did the, the wrong choice, so I did the wrong thing. But uh, when we is- ask the Holy Spirit to teach us, to guide us. You know, we're going to be doing uh, uh, better things. We're going to take better decisions. But uh, this is how you're going to let the Spirit work in your life. It's up to you. Nobody can force you to do anything. I remember nobody forced me to, to come to the Lord. Nobody forced me to, to come and, and look for the Lord. I was part of the world. I didn't know what the Lord wants for my life until I decide and said, Lord, I want you to help me. There was a time in my life when I was struggling very bad with the alcohol and, and I couldn't stand it more. You know, I was having problems on my family. I was having problems on, on my work and my life and personal life. And, and it was a struggle for me until I decided to, to ask the Lord, Lord, start helping me, please. I need you in my life. I need you. I, I cannot control my life. The word of the Lord says, he's our helper. He's the one to give you the strength to keep going on your Christian life. He gives you the, the, the power to, to fight the, the sin and to fight your life sometimes. The things that we don't want to do for God, you know, the Holy Spirit comes to our lives and start helping us. Start, you know, giving, giving us this uh, courage that we need to continue in this Christian life. It's not easy to be a Christian, especially in the, all, today's world, is, you know, with all different things. The world like to be inside the church, you know, but you know, I, I think the church needs to come to outside to the world and show Jesus' love and show the people what the Lord has done in my life. I cannot tell about what people, uh, what the Lord is doing in somebody else's life, but I can tell you what the Lord did in my life. I can tell you what the Lord, how the Lord delivered me from the, my sins, delivered me for, to be an, an alcoholic person. I can tell you that. My, my family can tell you what the Lord is doing in my life until today's day. You know, I've been, uh, uh, I don't think, uh, I, can, I cannot tell you that I've been a good father or a good pastor. Probably uh, um, I'm like a, 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 any other person. But you know, I struggle every day and I ask for, I ask the Lord, to give me the strength, to give me the, the, the strength to keep going, to keep forward on my life. But everything starts in your life. Everything starts in you. So it's up to you. You let the Holy Spirit do the work. Sometimes the, uh, the, the Word of God says when, when we accept Jesus Christ as our, our Savior, the, whole, the, the Holy Spirit comes to our lives and He seals us. He says, we are now, we belong to God. We are property of God. And let me share this scripture in Ephesians. Let 
it's right here. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18. It says, Don't be drunk with wine, because that will ruin your life. Instead, let the Holy Spirit fill and control you. So this is what the Holy Spirit does in the life of the Christian person. He fills your life. He controls your life. And when we let the Holy Spirit start controlling our life, start, start telling us what we can do for the Lord, what we can do for the church, what we can do for the, everybody else on the outside, that's when we live a life controlled by the Holy Spirit. Uh, Spirit. But when we we'll do the things we want to do and we don't want to hear the voice of the Lord on your hearts, that's when we rebel to God. They say, well, I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to do what I want to do. But when I submit to the Lord, when I be humble to the Lord and I start hearing his voice, I believe the Holy Spirit will speak to every one of you. And I believe he does. Sometimes we say, well, I, I, I didn't hear his voice. Uh, he didn't tell me anything. Or I didn't, you know, I don't, you know, physically hear his voice. But the, the Holy Spirit talked to our hearts. He speaks to our lives. I believe there is a time where you want to do something or you did something wrong and there is something inside you that is telling you you did wrong, right? It's not because we are good people. It's not because we are the best people. That's because the Holy Spirit is talking to you. He's telling you, you did wrong this time. You don't did the right thing, so you need to, you know, uh, uh, repent. You need to do uh, uh, the things the right way. That's the Lord talking to our lives. That's the Holy Spirit ministering, ministering our lives, telling us what we should do for the Lord. But it's up to us. If we pay attention to the voice of the Lord, or we just decide not to do it, but uh, the, Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit wants to fill our lives. And what I mean wants to fill our lives, that means he wants you to control our lives. In, this is something that nobody wants to be in control, right? Husbands, wives, I don't want my husband to control my life. I don't want my, my wife to control my life. I don't want my friends to control my life, my life or that work. But the Holy Spirit does the one who can control your life. If you let him do that, if you let him to control your life, let me tell you, this is what he's going to do in your life. He's going to do a good things for you, for your family, for yourself, for your Christian life. But again, again, sisters and brothers, it's up to you if you let him do that. And to be filled with the Holy Spirit is something we need to ask every day. It's something that we need to look for the Lord, you know, through his word, through the prayers, and asking, Lord, I want to get filled with you, Holy Spirit. I'm sealed with your spirit when I receive you, but I want to be filled with you. I want to, I want to have a life filled with your presence of my life. That's amazing when we praise the Lord and we can feel his presence. I don't know if you feel it. I hear many years ago when people talk about, oh, the, 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 the uh, uh, worship was, was uh, marvelous because we feel the presence of the Lord. There was a time of my life that I couldn't feel anything. The, I was in church. They were uh, uh, praising the Lord. And I just, you know, said, well, that, that was a nice play. And, and that's it. I didn't feel anything. But when you, when you feel something in your heart, when you start feeling that the Lord is in, is in this ambient, it's in your pres it, you are in his presence, that's something different. That's when you say, Lord, I know that you are here. I, and let me tell you, uh, uh, brothers and sisters, the Lord is in this place because I can feel the Lord in this place. And I know you can feel the Lord in this place when you, when you are... Uh, praising God, when you are uh, uh, reading his word, when you are meditating his word, when you are uh, just looking for him. And there is something we need to do. It's like a, a Pastor Michael says last time, this, this uh, Holy Spirit, this one part of the, uh, this God, the Son and the Holy Spirit, it's a person. And the only way to know a person or to know that person is to get time with that person. You like to know me? You, you can spend time with me. You can invite me home and, you know, and do some cooking and we can know each other. I spend some time knowing Pastor Michael going to uh, 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 eat in the restaurant, remember, Pastor? 
And that's the way we, we know Pastor Michael. We know, you know, he went to uh, uh, different uh, uh, parts of the world. You know, when he was on the, um, uh, what it was, Pastor uh, Navy, Army? Air Force, see? Yeah. Okay. I knew he was there. So the only way to know a person that's spending time with the person. If we want to know the Holy Spirit, we need to spend time in the presence of the Lord. If we want to know what the Holy Spirit wants in my life, I need to spend that time. And if I'm going to take the time every week or every two weeks or every month, I mean, it's going to be a, a poor relationship. But I believe that we need to, to spend time with the Lord every day. Every single day, we look for the Lord, we look for His presence, then we, we, we will know what the Lord wants in my life, what the Lord wants for me, and what, what I can do to, to change my, my, my life, to change the way I am. There is things in our lives that we can change ourselves. There is change, things that we can uh, change in, in, my, in my life, in my person, but there are things that I cannot change. That we have habits. And sometimes are good habits. Sometimes there are bad habits. Uh, uh, let me tell you something. Don't tell the Hispanic people. But Hispanic people, they get a bad habit to be late at church all the time. And there is, there, is, uh, there is a really bad habit. This is something that we are struggling through. Now, uh, you know, the, the, the Hispanic people, probably through our generations, we're late at church. We're late to uh, uh, something important. But we are never late for football. We are never late for a party. So uh, it's, it's kind of strange, right? It's different. But when you are in a relationship with God, you want to be on time at church. You want to be in his presence. You know, you want to be, I believe everybody dedicates some time through the day to pray to the Lord, to, to look for the Lord. Uh, it can be afternoon, morning. You know, mine is, uh, I, I do it early morning and sometimes at night, but early morning I do, I, I seek the Lord. And that's very important. When you are doing that in your life, you know, you know what the Lord wants in your life and what things you can change and things you cannot change. There is things you cannot change. That that's when I ask the Lord, Lord, help me to change this part of my life that I cannot change, that, I, that I'm struggling and I'm having a hard time to change or hard time to, to, to be a different person. I like to be like you are, Lord. I like to be the way you told me to to be the, the person I want, you want me to be. And this is, some, this is a work that we need to do every day. I don't know if you agree with me, but they, you know, looking for the presence of the Lord every day, that's very important. And that's the only way we're going to let the Holy Spirit start working on our lives and let him do what he wants to do, but not what we want to do, brothers. And there is a, a, a story in the book of Acts and you all know that Peter, when Peter was preaching the, the word of the Lord, he was, he was being touched by the Holy Spirit. Let me just read really fast what the book of Acts says. Book of Acts, uh, chapter 4, verse 13. I'm sorry, verse 8. It says, <clears throat> Then Peter... Filled with the Holy Spirit. Look the word he's using right there. Filled with the Holy Spirit. If we want to do something for the Lord, if we want to do something in our lives, we need to get filled of the Holy Spirit. That's where we get our courage. That's where we get our strength. That's where we get our you know, power. It's, and it says, Filled with the Holy Spirit, say to them, Leaders and elders of our nation, are we being questioned because we done a good deed for a crippled man? Do you want to know who was who he was healed? Let me clearly state to you and to all the people of Israel that he was healed in the name of the power of Jesus Christ from Nazareth. The man, the man you crucify, but whom God raised from the dead. For Jesus is the one referred into the scriptures. And I, 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 I'm going to keep reading. But the, the word says, Peter was filled with the Holy Spirit. 
And that's the only way he can do the work of the Lord. I believe if he wasn't filled with the Holy Spirit, he won't be, you know, uh, uh, standing right there in front of that people and telling all that people. The, the word says 5,000 people convert that day. 5,000 people, you know, give the, their lives to the Lord. And if we want to reach people, if we want to, you know, uh, tell the people about God, I believe our lives need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Because when a life is filled with the Holy Spirit, you can talk to a person. And you don't have to tell them, you need to change this, you need to do this, or you need to do that. You only talk to them. You pass time with them. And you let them see your life, what the Lord has done in you. I believe, you know, there is more than one person that probably they tell you, oh, are you Christian? Or, or you know, in, in, in how they know that you are Christian, because there is something different on you. The Lord, when, when he sealed you, when he put his Holy Spirit in you, he's doing, he's a part in you. He's now saying, this is my property. This is my son. This is my daughter. Now we belong to God. And, and I believe, uh, 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 brothers and sisters, we need to ask the Lord to fill us with his Holy Spirit every day so the world can see what the Lord has been done in your lives and how we can reach that people, how we can tell them, you know, Jesus Christ loves you. Jesus Christ can change your life the way he did it on my life. He can do the same in your life, but only like the word, the word that God says, Peter was filled of the Holy Spirit. Peter was, was filled of that presence of the Lord. Okay, when he was talking, people start crying, people start repenting of their sins, and that's what the Lord wants in our lives. When, when your life gets filled with the Holy Spirit, then you're going to be doing what the Lord wants to do. You want to do His way, but not my way. We're going to do what He wants me to do, and we need to be obedient. The first part, and I'm just ending this right now, the first part of John 14 says, If you love me, obey my commandments. And we love God. If we want to obey His commandments, but let me tell you, if we want to do it alone, it's very hard. Because I didn't want to do His will. I want to do mine. But when we let the Holy Spirit live in your life, that's when we start, you know, giving more of my person to be less of me and more of God. To be less of Fernando Cuellar and be more like uh, the servant of God. The word of the God says, if you want to, to be the greatest on the, on the kingdom of God, you have to serve the people. You have to serve your brother. You have to serve your sister. And this is something that we don't want to do sometimes, but that's the, the, the teaching the Lord gave, gave to us to serve our, 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 uh, uh, our friends, to serve our family, to, to serve our, our brothers and sisters in church. When we start to doing that, we're gonna, we, we will see what the Lord is doing in your hearts, but we need to let him do that inside us. And we need to ask him every day, Lord, I want you in my life. I want you to start doing your work in my heart, in my mind. I don't want to be the same person. I want to be like you. I want to be the way you teach me to do it, the way you show me to, to be a good Christian. There is only when we have the help from the Lord, from the Holy Spirit. So I just want to finish with this, and thanks, Pastor, thanks uh, uh, Pastor Michael for this chance that he gave me today. And I, I, my prayer is that the Holy Spirit continue doing his work in our lives. I believe he, doesn't fin he hasn't finished that work. Apostle, uh, the Apostle Paul says he, didn't, he wasn't feeling like he was done, he was complete. He says, I'm still running, you know, through the, you know, to, to seek for the Lord. And, and that's the way we, I believe we are right now. We're still, you know, walking through that path. We're still, you know, struggling in your lives. But let me tell you, when the Holy Spirit just are working in our lives, that's when we have this strength to keep going. That's when we have, you know, that courage to say, yeah, I'm going to go, I'm going to keep going. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to throw the towel and say, well, I don't want to be Christian no more. I don't want to go to the church. Or I'm, you know, losing my patience because, you know, it's hard sometimes. But when we let the Holy Spirit doing that in your lives, that's, that's the one who gives us the power. That's the one who gives us the strength. That's what, how, how the uh, uh, word says. He's our counselor. He's the one who guides our lives. And that's my prayer. 
to continue doing the work in our lives, not only your life, in my life, because I need his presence too. So this is my prayer for, for you, uh, church. And I just want to end up with a prayer, and, and I'm going to ask you to stand up just to, so we can, I can finish uh, um, this part. Thanks again, Pastor Michael. Amen. Father, I, I thank you, Lord, for your favor. I thank you, Lord, for all the things you have done for, for our lives. And we as a church, as, as your church, Lord, we ask you to continue filling our lives the way you did on your servants, the way you did on your apostle Peter, filling alive with your presence, with your Holy Spirit. And I ask you, Lord, to do that on our hearts, to do that on our churches so we can continue the work, so we can continue growing and keep reaching out people so they can know you, so they can know the real God. I thank you, God, for Cornerstone Fellowship. Thanks for every life, for these families, Lord. I ask you to, to bless their lives, to bless their houses, their works, and to fill their lives with your Holy Spirit every day. We ask you that in, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Pastor.